guys welcome back to the channel today we're talking about my 2008 Volvo C30 I've had this car for over seven years I've had it wrapped for five years so I just wanted to do a video to give some impressions on what it is like to own one of these for seven years if you're new to the channel like the video subscribe to the channel let's jump right in so this is my 2008 Volvo C30 that I've owned for the past seven years. It's pretty dirty because I did some driving today, but I just wanted to bring you up to speed on what it's like to have owned this car for seven years. And the first place I am going to start is right here with the brakes. All right, so the car came with 280 millimeter brakes and the brakes on this car is pathetic to the point where I feel it's probably unsafe. You press the pedal, there's a lot of pedal travel before there's a bite, and when the brakes do bite, it's very, very soft. So, visiting the forums and listening to everyone who's had one of these, I upgraded the rotors to the 320 millimeter rotors. I have race pads on this. I upgraded the fluid, so I have race fluid in here. And then I also have track pads on the car and then I also did the brake lines in metal. If you have one of these and you want to improve the brake feel, the first thing I would tell you to do, upgrade the brake lines. These cars are almost 15 years old now and the rubber brake lines over time have been expanding and contracting and if you put the steel brake lines in, you will get a better feel on your brakes. It's not going to improve it drastically. Don't waste your time with the rotors upgrade. You're gonna be disappointed at the end. Just do the brake lines and that's it. Now I did mention that I upgraded the brakes on the car. I went with dimpled and slotted rotors instead of drilled or just full steel. Next time I will go with a full steel rotor because I think I'm losing brake and performance using this dimpled and slotted thing and it does wear your pads down a lot faster. One of the biggest gripes that I have after the brakes with this car has to do with the headlights. It's so dim, it's like holding up a candle in front of your face. So what I've done with this car is I've put some LED bulbs in there and I have them pointed correctly so that they're not blinding people. But what that does is it throws an error code on the dash and you may have to buy an additional accessory to kind of remove that code. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is suspension. I upgraded the suspension on this car to the BC Racing Coilover. Don't waste your time doing uh, any upgrades to the shocks and struts. Just go straight to coilovers. It gives you a lot more adjustability. It firms up the ride because this car rides very soft. I also have a strut brace across the front. And then in the rear, I also have a strut brace as well. This car does not take well to being lowered. So when you do lower it, you're going to have to put in some adjustable camber arms and uh, some other suspension changes to make sure you're not eating up your tires. I did not know that. I learned it the hard way. So I replaced the airbox with this cone air intake. It did improve the noise that I got out of the engine, but this cone is just pulling in hot air and recirculating the hot air into the engine. So I'm sure I'm losing power from that. But it does make this 2.5 turbo cylinder engine sound so much better. Don't do that. Stick with this stock airbox. So since we're up here, let me tell you one of the things that did go wrong on my car and seems to be a problem with this car. The AC condenser over time locks up on this car and then it breaks your accessory belt. The AC condenser is very expensive, but I believe if you have it replaced by Volvo, it is a lifetime warranty on it but the AC sucks because if you stick your foot into it, it cuts the AC so you can get power and then this AC condenser seems to have a way of going out. All right, another issue that I've had is the axles on this car. This car doesn't like to be pushed in the corners, but this is not a sporty car. In order for this car to handle corners and stuff, you're gonna have to put a lot of money into the suspension. You're gonna be on the forums trying to figure out how to dial in the suspension so you can push this car into turns. It does not like to go into turns. You will be replacing axles. If you have one of these, you run into that problem, go to the forums. Uh, I'm sure there's some fixes that you can use to save yourself some axles, but I've had to replace the axles twice on this car. All right, let's talk about the interior of the car. Surprisingly, there is good 
room in this car. I am 5'11", I fit well, even when I scoot the seat all the way back, I can probably have a little child sit behind me. The back seats are usable for short distances, but anything over a couple of miles, your know, rear passengers are gonna be complaining. I have the manually adjusted seats and um, they're okay. There's uh, very good cushioning on, on the seats. However, if you wanna push this car in the corners, these seats are not sports seats. So what I've done on the, on the driver's side is I've upgraded my seats to Sparco seats and you have to go to the forums to figure out how to disable the airbag light on the dash. It can be done, just be careful, but that's how I have my driver side seat set up. And on the passenger side seat, I have it covered with uh, one of those seat covers. The rear seats have been upholstered to uh, have that red and black theme going. All right, another of my sore points with this car has to do with the infotainment system. Volvo put in this waterfall style infotainment system and it looks pretty cool. The problem is you can't upgrade it. So right now I do have a Bluetooth module from Guam USA. I'll put the link in the bottom for it. But uh, as far as updating this thing, you're very limited. And if you look at this, interaction point here i don't know what they were trying to get to here it's like a phone pad and it's just a hot mess there is a cigarette lighter up front so you can plug in your dash cam like i have and you can also power your phone there isn't really a good place to mount your phone i use one of those phone mounts um, that go into the vent of the car but what it does is it blocks your hazard lights so uh, there really isn't a good solution for connecting your phone or putting up your phone in the car But this uh, vent style phone mount is pretty good. The back seats are surprisingly very comfortable But again short distances only All right, so we are at the back of the car. We're talking about the boot. One of the things that I did do I have the rear strut brace on on the car to kind of help stiffen it up because this car drives really really soft but you get a lot of space in the boot here. It's, it's not ginormous, but the opening, if you look at the size of the opening, you can get something pretty big. The seats, the rear seats fold flat and that doubles the space. Where I kind of uh, limited myself is by putting the shut brace. I can't put anything too big in here, but I do get my golf clubs in there. Another neat thing about this car is you get a full size spear in here. So you've got a spare tire in case you get a flat. It's not like BMW where they give you a can of gooey stuff to keep your car running. You get a uh, flat in this car, you have a spare, you can change it and uh, you're back on the road. Now I did say this car sounds really good. It's a 2.5 turbo five cylinder engine. And what I did to mine is I have a catalyst downpipe and I also have a Magnaflow cat back uh, muffler system set up in the back here. It sounds really good. But overall, in the seven years that I've owned the car, I really liked it. I did put this wrap on it. It was very expensive. Actually, the wrap cost more than the car because I bought this car for East T. So the amount of money that I saved on it, I was able to do all the craziness that I've done. I've done the wrap, I've done the coilovers. These are wheels off of the Volvo 850R, I believe. These are called Pegasus wheels. So I have those. I do have the Continental Extreme Contact Sport tire on here. This is, I would recommend these. Uh, they really help with traction in the corners. Uh, I did buy this roof box just for style. I haven't put anything in here. It's just a styling thing. Um, I do have the roof rails on. This is the Volvo roof rails on. And um, overall, I've been pretty happy with the car. 
There are a few things that I appreciate in this car that you don't see in a lot of other cars. It has these gas struts that hold the hood up. This is so convenient. You don't have to use the prop rod and all that crazy stuff. I love that. The other thing is I have a dipstick. I have a dipstick. All of these modern BMWs, Mercedes, whatever, they come with computer stuff and you got to look on screen, turn the car on. Having this is a lifesaver. So you just pop the hood, you read your oil reading and you're good to go. You don't have to deal with screens and all that stuff. Another cool feature on this car is it has a handbrake. A lot of cars have these electronic style handbrakes. This one has a true handbrake. Unfortunately, the car is front wheel drive, so you can't do some of the fancy stuff that you would if you had a rear wheel drive car. In the seven years I've owned the car, I ha I've had to replace the battery twice. Um, not sure why, but uh, I don't know if these batteries can hold their charge for that long, but yeah, I've had to replace these twice. So look into something with a little more longevity than the stock Volvo batteries. All right, guys, well, that is it for me and my 15 year old Volvo. I've owned it for the last seven years. I hope that the information that I've put out here has been pretty helpful. If I've said anything wrong or that needs correction, just leave a comment down below and I will correct myself. Thanks for checking out the video. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next one. If you like this style of video, let me know and I'll get some more of these going. Peace.